Well, I guess you can call me the Jetman because I have the jet patch. Oh yeah, we're doing it. Yeah, I don't think we can do that without getting hit with a copyright strike, so I'm just gonna avoid this entire thing. Now that I've taken that badge though, we can move on to Lentimus Town and proceed to Reversal Mountain. Because Twist Mountain wasn't good enough, I guess. At least there's a free Firestone for me to get before heading there though. The exterior of the Reversal Mountain is home to quite a few Pokemon, but I guess not anymore since I stuffed Driftplim, Skarmory, Skarupi, Gamerupt, and Numel, or Spoink if you're playing Black 2, into the box before proceeding into the detour that is the Strange House, where I can capture Bayonet and get the Lunar Wing for some legendary hunting in the postgame. Not sure why I get this now, but okay I suppose. Reversal Mountain also houses a legendary that I can't yet get to, so why do I care? I don't since there's literally no new encounters here, making it a half of a waste of time, but at the very least I can level up Skarupi on the trainers here before leaving. Bianca actually accompanies me throughout this cave, so I'm able to get free heals after every battle, making grinding a little bit easier, but of course we don't have access to Audino in here, so it's practically useless. Skarupi got pretty close to evolving before I made it out into Undella Town, where I managed to capture Staryu from regular surfing, immediately using one of the water stones I got while looking for the Dusk Stone for Chandelure last section to evolve into Starmie. You know what? You deserve a reward for getting this far into the video. Oh, what's that you say? Well, I'm actually doing a giveaway on my Twitter for 15 ultra rare Pokemon cards pictured here. If you follow me over on Twitter, subscribe to the YouTube channel, and reply to the link post in the description, you have a chance to win one of these bad boys. And if I hit over a thousand followers by the end of February, I think we'll be adding a few extra cards to the card pool. Anyway, back to the video. I triggered a call with Yancey, as I've been doing throughout every area that I can, then went north to take out Hugh, and over east to Undella Bay. There's a static Jellicent, which doesn't matter, but what does matter here are Whalmer, Sveal during the winter, evolving Skarupi into Drapion at level 40 during the search, Waylord, Remoraid, and after changing the season, Mantike. While fighting trainers on the route as well, I managed to evolve said Mantike into Mantine in one level with Remoraid in the party, as well as Remoraid itself into Octillery after a single level. Mind you, I actually fought these trainers not just to grind, as directly north of the bay is Seaside Cave, and while I can't go further than two steps, that's plenty enough for me to run back and forth between to capture Seal, heading south of Undella to Route 14 afterwards. Seal evolves into Dugong by the time I made it to the grass, where I still didn't make it to the grass before Sveal evolved into Celio after a single level. Ah, here we go, here's some grass. About friggin' time. I was able to capture Absol, Mienfu, Altaria, and Swablu while I was here, being acquired rather quickly before I went back up north to Route 13. There's a few things here to capture, though unshockingly, I evolved Celio into Walrein at level 44. But those things are insignificant compared to the first of our legendaries for the entire game, Cobalion. Not the most difficult thing to capture, but it's nice to already grab one of these after tossing a dozen or so Ultra Balls. Not too bad, but that leaves Tangela, its evolution Tangrowth in the Rustling Grass, Solrock, Pelipper, and Lunatone. It actually took quite a while to find Tangrowth as it's a 5% encounter, so I was able to use it to grind on the Audino into the area, getting Mianfu very close to evolving thanks to the Lucky Egg that I was able to grab back in the Celestial Tower from Professor Juniper. After taking care of those, I went over to Route 12 by crossing through Lacanosa Town, just taking care of a double battle before arriving, and yeah, there's actually no encounters here. Well, at least I appreciate that, but that doesn't mean that there's nothing coming up, as the village bridge contains a single rippling water encounter in Lapras. It's pretty difficult to find, as it's a 5% encounter, so I ended up evolving Mianfu into Mianxiao at level 50 before finding it after around 30 minutes. Then it proceeded to use Parish Song and KO itself before I could capture it. Ah, oh, god, I thought I used the Master Ball for the thing that was actually going to be difficult to catch. But here we are again. Not for the Politoed in the post game either, because that also has Parish Song. Why do they give these Pokemon Parish Song? Anyway, it took me about 15 more minutes to find a second one, where I managed to catch it, but there are still more encounters to go. Route 11 has a few more, but I'm not necessarily worried about them, because they're not really rare at all. The first one of which is Gligar, and the second available Sword of Justice, Verizion. 
Man, I love the grass fighting type. Breloom, Verizian, Chestnut. Every single Pokemon with this type combo is pretty dope, and I really like it. I skipped over the single rare encounter in this route for now, since we only have one more area to grab Pokemon, and I'd rather use the time searching for it for grinding as well, as it's another rustling grass encounter. After crossing through Opelucid City, I'm able to arrive on Route 9, where I can grab two encounters, those being Pawniard in the grass, and another hidden grotto encounter. Before I found it though, I finally got the final call from Yancey, which lets me encounter her physically in Mbasa City for the first time. I'll have to do a series of 20 calls to her in the postgame before I can do the in-game trades with her, so for now we'll be able to leave her alone. Back to Route 9 though, Buffalant took me around, oh, actually only 25 minutes. This is really lucky actually, since Buffalant is a 1% encounter, and as I've explained before, 20% of the time do Pokemon actually even show up, so yeah, it was pretty sheer luck. This just leaves the rustling grass encounter on Route 11, that being Gliscor. This seems really worth doing since the grinding BP in the battle subway for a Razor Fang... Uh, I don't even want to think about going back there, but we will have to in a little bit. By the time I found it, Pawniard ended up getting to level 47, so after grabbing it and fighting a few more Autonos, it evolved into Bisharp at level 52, letting me face off against Drayden with a total of 194 Pokemon at a time of 86 hours and 4 minutes. Well, pre-badge 8 is really short, only 11 Pokemon actually. It's only as many as pre-badge 1 of the original Black and White, but luckily it doesn't take nearly as long. After beating Drayden, there's a huge story dump where I can't get a single encounter, so unfortunately all of this experience is only going to be useful to help me sweep the Elite Four later on, which is terrible, but I know I'll have plenty of firepower by then thanks to Hydreigon, the Swords of Justice, Haxorus, and whatever the last Pokemon I end up choosing. Anyway, with all that finished, I went back to Undela Town, going through the Marine Tube and arriving in Humalau City. How do you pronounce that? Humalau? Humailu? I have no clue. I'm just gonna call it Humalau because that seems like the accurate way, and I don't feel like cross-referencing the anime. The city itself actually has an encounter in the Rippling Water, that being Corsola, and it's not too difficult to find, allowing me to move on to the Seaside Cave. But wait, weren't an I here before? Yes, actually, but this time I'm able to approach from the other entrance through Route 21, where I can go into the basement and capture a Shuckle. North of Humilau is also Route 22, containing Deli Bird, and right on through is the Giant Chasm. It's mostly blocked off, but the entrance at least can get me Sneasel, Vanillish, Piloswine, and Clefairy. Yeah, no rustling grass, no dust cloud, nothing can get me Weavile, with the exception of going up to the Battle Subway for the Razor Claw. So yeah, we'll have to do that later. At least I already have the Moonstone for Clefairy to evolve into Clefable, but it's time to go to work, since the Razor Claw isn't gonna earn itself. Well, I guess I should grind first. I absolutely hate the Battle Subway in this game. Not because the content is bad, it's just grinding for BP is really slow compared to something like X and Y. With that aside, I evolved Piloswine into Mamoswine after reteaching an ancient power in the Pokemon World Tournament and leveling it up once, then moved onto the subway. I'll save Vanillish for later. Luckily, the Razor Claw is only 8 BP as opposed to 48 BP like it is in some other games, so it only takes me 3 wins through the entirety of the battle subway to get one, and going back to Route 22 and grinding on a few more Autonos to evolve Sneasel into Weavile after one level while holding it. Last up is Vanillish, and it really didn't take too long for it to evolve into Vanillix at level 47. Awesome, it's time for the last badge. 207 Pokemon down and with a time of 88 hours and 42 minutes. I can just taste the Elite Four, but we still have a few more painful things to get through first. So, fun fact, I actually lost about two hours of progress here, as I usually make both a manual save and a save state, as well as exporting my save to a flash drive to make sure I don't lose any progress ever again but the one time I didn't export the save, I accidentally hit the load save button and went back to Howe's water type regional variant. It's not too big of a deal though, so let's talk about the section. First of which is back over on Route 22, since now that I have the wave badge in tow, I'm able to capture the last of the Swords of Justice, Terrakion. Story dump time again, and I actually can't get an encounter to grind up, but the Plasma Fergret is pretty short if you know what you're doing, so I was able to get by relatively quickly taking out the best character in the game with the best battle theme, and head to the giant Chasm's Crater Forest where more story stuff takes place. 
Here I'm actually able to get some Pokemon though, these being Matang and Ditto. I decided against getting Metagross in the Rustling Grass since Matang is not difficult to evolve whatsoever at this point, since I'm literally able to evolve it in one level aboard the second part of the Plasma Forget into Metagross. One Shadow Triad, White Kiram, and gets this battle later, and I'm finally free from the clutches of the story. Free to deal with yet another stupid hidden grotto. Now that Route 13 is more open with the Plasma Arc being finished, I'm able to run back and forth and back and forth again and again in order to grab Drifloon. Taking a grand total of... 10 minutes? Why do these things keep going by fast? Okay, well, I will take it, but there's a few more things to grab. Route 23 is the last numbered route I have to take down, where I can capture Throw and Rufflet from the regular grass, as well as Sock from the rustling grass. Luckily that didn't take too long, so I made sure to go over to Route 14 for the last revisit I need to do. Since now that I have access to Waterfall, I can open up the Abundant Shrine, an important area housing Vulpix, evolving it immediately into Ninetales with a Firestone, Bronzor, and in the dark grass, Bronzong. No grinding yet, and thank goodness, since we still have to grab Zwilus, and Lord knows level 64 is going to be difficult enough, even with mid-level 40 Audino. Alright, three more Pokémon. The first two are actually encounterable in the opening area in both Golurk and Drudigan, leaving just Zwilus to be captured later on on the third floor. There's still a boatload of trainers on Route 23 as well, so I just use Zwilus on them, getting it to level 56 and evolving it into Hydreigon after using the eight remaining rare candies that I had scoured for across the region. This finishes the section with a total of 223 Pokémon and a time of 91 hours and 57 minutes. Since I'm able to rip through Chantal, Grimsley, Caitlyn, Marshall, and Iris, all that's left is now the post-game. And the post-game is going to jump our total from 223 Pokémon to 428. Yeah, nearly half of the Pokémon available in this game are in the post-game, and to add insult to injury, I did things in a weird order, going back and forth between tasks instead of doing things like swarms, Yancey trades, legendary hunting, and regular encounters in chunks. Anyway, after getting national decks, I'm able to head over to the clay tunnel, which was originally blocked off until now, where I can capture Durant and Steelix from the dust clouds. Twist Mountain is also connected to this area, so I can go ahead and grab Heatmore and Cryogonal. But wait, there's even more! While I can't capture Regigigas, which that room that leads to Regigigas is the connection between Clay Tunnel and Twist Mountain, I can in fact take a detour through Clay's Tunnel to get to Regirock and Regice after changing the game's chamber key. Black 2 players can get Registeel, but you can't get all three without trading, and therefore no Regigigas, so we're just going to leave this place alone for the rest of the game. On my way out, I made sure to evolve one of my remaining Eevees into Glaceon, since the Ice Rock is literally in the room before Regigigas, so at least there's that. Before I left though, I grabbed the Daily Fossil from the guy in the connecting room to Twist Mountain, says we'll be needing to get 7 unique fossils. Next up on the docket are the Gen 4 Legendary Pixies, where I can release them out of the Cave of Being on Route 20, with Mesprit being available on the top of Celestial Tower. I'm not worried about the other two for the time being, instead heading across the two blind bridge connected to Route 9 to get to Route 8, so that I can catch Palpitoad, Stunfisk, and Krogunk. This finally lets me get to Osiris City, and therefore Dragon Spiral Tower, but that's not where we need to go yet. Back in Victory Road, there's a little exit that allows me to get to the remains of End's castle from the first game. And lets me battle Reshiram and give me the White Stone so that I can bring it up to the top of Dragon Spiral Tower to capture it with a Quick Ball. Yeah, I'm surprised that Reshiram went in so easily, but with that, the Giant Chasm is actually open again where I can grab Kyurem, also with a Quick Ball. Since apparently the game is adoring me right now! Finally, Giant Chasm allows me to access Route 23 easily, where I can go grab Azelf. Alright, enough with Legendaries for now, it's time to head to some new areas. Pinwheel Forest is where I can evolve Eevee into Leafeon since that area houses the Moss Rock, and on the outside I evolved Palpitoad into Seismitoad in one level, as well as grabbing Toxicroak before handling the Hidden Grotto, where it took me quite a while to grab Bagon, Metacham, Poliwhirl, and Hariyama. Almost as long as it took me to get Heracross, but it wasn't nearly that bad. 
There's a few things left here, but I'd rather not get them all yet, instead going for Yuxi over in Necreen City to finish off the legendary pixies. With Poliwhirl in the box too, I can just slap a water stone on it to get me a Poliwrath. But wait, there's more again! We've also got a fossil here in the museum, but there's a bit of a weird thing. Despite them not being exclusive, you're better off getting the Cover Fossil in Tortuga in White 2, or the Plume Fossil in Archon in Black 2. You'll see why later, but for now I revived Shield On in Tortuga, moving back to Pinwheel Forest. The outside still has a few trainers for me to take down, letting me evolve Bagon into Shellgon before entering the interior once again. There's a little side mission I have to take care of with Charon, so dragging in the Pokémon I need to evolve was the best thing I could do. Evolving Shellgon into Salamence in a single level, Shieldon into Bastiodon at level 30, and Tertuga into Karakasta at level 37. I'm out of Pokémon to evolve for the time being, so after finishing the side mission, I went over to Nimbasa, going east towards the Marvelous Bridge. There's two Pokémon here, since I can purchase a Magikarp as well as catch Cresselia thanks to the Lunar Wing that we got a few sections ago in the Strange House. Now that I have something to evolve, I'm able to head back to the Pinwheel Forest to capture Yanma from the exterior, heading back to the Pokémon World Tournament to immediately give it Ancient Power, and because I can't seem to finish an area off right now, I was more worried about getting a Swarm Encounter before the day rolled over, capturing Cacturn from the outside of Reversal Mountain before heading back one final time to finish the area. There's a hidden grotto where I can get Breloom, Butterfree, or Beedrill in Black 2, Evolving Yanma into Yanmega while knowing Ancient Power after a single level, Magikarp evolving into Gyarados at level 20, and Murkrow, which was immediately evolved into Haunchcrow with a Dusk Stone, finally finishing the area with Vigoroth from the regular grass. There's also a rare candy around here, so I managed to grab that, evolving Vigoroth into Slacking with it. I went back to Twist Mountain now that the day rolled over, getting a Helix Fossil that I revived into Ammonite before heading to Route 15. There's a single Pokémon here that I want, that being Pupitar, which I evolved into Tyranitar thanks to the trainers on the route. But there are also Audino in the mid-50s out here, so I'm sure it'll be useful at some point. Going back to Nacreen City, the gate to the east contains an egg we'll need to hatch, finally getting me to Route 3, the home of breeding. Well, along with an encounter, and not one, but two hidden grottos! Great. I evolved Ammonite into Amistar at level 40 while taking out trainers, getting to the daycare, and it's time to bang out a number of Pokémon. Literally. I'm gonna get a lot of flack for that joke. I went ahead and chucked a Ditto in here for all eternity, breeding Caterpie, Slackoth, Happini, Larvitar, Cacnea, Shroomish, Timple, Poliwag, Makihita, Metatite, Cleffa, Wingull, Golit, Dano, Swinub, Beldum, Shuppet, Vanillite, and Lorvesta for the time being. Next up on the docket is again Funfest missions! You see, I can actually get a Plume Fossil through the Not Found Lost Item mission, whereas in Black 2 you can get the Cover Fossil through the Forgotten Lost Item mission. This is why I grabbed the Cover Fossil earlier, since it makes life a lot easier instead of having to grind a Join Avenue of all things. After doing so, I evolved Caterpie into Metapod after one battle's worth of EXP, as well as Happini into Chansey with an Oval Stone held. Then revived Archon before heading back to the only water encounter on Route 3, Corefish. Crawdon can be found through Rippling Water, but I don't need it as I already have Corefish. What I do need, though, is to find a number of Pokémon in the two hidden grottos on this route. The first one here has Bibarel, Lombre, and Venonat, which took me around two hours to find all three, whereas the other in the dark grass had me find Pachirisu and Maynectric. I went straight to the PC afterwards to evolve Lombre into Ludicolo with the Water Stone, then moved on to the Dream Yard to the east of Striaton City. Latias is here and I need to chase it around, but I also made sure to capture Muna before going for it. Beware though, if doesn't give you an option to fight you before you go too far, so make sure to save. I did it, and I'm lucky it didn't come back to bite me in the ass. I kept trying Ultra Balls though, and since I know Pokemon, they do love their aesthetic. So I threw a single regular Pokeball, and turns out it just needed a red and white ball to go with its red and white body. With that, I grabbed the Soul Dew, evolved Archon into Archeops after a random battle, 
and evolved Chansey into Blissey with max happiness, leaving just Jigglypuff to capture to finish off the area. Moonstones for both of them resulted in Wigglytuff and Misharna, leading me down to Route 2, the home of Lickitung, but it also has a hidden nut grotto. Yeah, these things are very popular in the postgame for some reason. Before hunting for the three Pokemon in there though, I made sure to evolve Corphish into Crawdont after a single level, as well as Venonat into Venomoth. Oh, and I guess reteaching Lickitung rollout before hunting would probably be smart. I actually whited out on the route due to a trainer I had accidentally ran into. Pretty unfortunate, but that's what happens when you only run two Pokemon on level with the route, and they happen to one-shot your Azelf with a Masquerade. Pretty sure that's the first time I've accidentally whited out in a Professor Oak's challenge, but hey, there's a first time for everything. I also ran out of money, but that was pretty easily solved after selling off my shards, mulch, and a bunch of valuables like comet shards, mushrooms, and a few other things, getting me up to around 400,000 Poké Dollars before going to buy a ton of Super Repels, Floor Stores, and various Pokéballs. Alright, how many times do I have to teach you this lesson, old man? Get out of here! Let me deal with that hidden grotto! I evolved Lickitung into Licky Licky after that fight, then started hunting. Unfortunately, one of the encounters I can get here is Watchog, which really just wrecked my flow whenever I saw a decent number of these before finding anything that I needed here, but eventually I did manage to score Nidoran Male and Granbull. The other Nidoran is available here, but I figured I'd just breed the male Nidoran with Ditto to get it, since they can do that, which is pretty nice. I guess it makes sense, it's just a gender variant like most other Pokemon, they just branch off into different paths of evolution. Alright, time for some more breeding. We're getting close to the end, just bear with me because, oh lord, suffering is here. If people were over on the Twitch channel for over 100 hours of this challenge, I'm sure we can pull off just a few more minutes. I bred Iglybuff, Electrike, Bidoof, Blotad, Snubble, and Nidoran Female. I had run out of Moonstones, though, after Wigglytuff and Musharna, so I just went into the Wellspring Cave, evolving Nidoran Male into Nidorino and Nidoran Female into Nidorina, both at level 16 after a single trainer battle, hunting for a single Moonstone to evolve Nidorino into Nidoking, and grabbing the hidden one outside of the Giant Chasm to evolve Nidorina into Nidoqueen, finishing the need for Moonstones for the rest of the game. Time for the final batch of new areas, as I'm able to head through Route 1 and make New Vemitown flyable, then headed to Route 17, getting through quickly to make it to Route 18, allowing me to capture Carnivine and Tropius in the grass, as well as Chadot and Kingler in the Hidden Grotto. The other new Pokémon here will be easy to find otherwise, so there's no need for me to worry. Now that I've got an empty Hidden Grotto in front of me though, I'm able to activate the Search Hidden Grottos mission, finishing that, then doing the Quiet Hidden Grotto mission in order to capture Glammeow. If you're playing Black 2, you'll get the Noisy Grotto and capture Stunky, but with that, that's the very last hidden grotto I have to deal with for this game, and good riddance, I never want to see one of these things ever again, even though Black 2 and White 2 are my favorite games in the series. But hey, even my favorite games have some bad things in them. Now it's time for fishing, as I can go to Cedric Juniper in Nuvema Town to pick up the Super Rod. I tried going the most efficient route that I could, so I grabbed Goldeen from Asperdia City, Polito from Rippling Spots on Route 20, of course, after a stupid Parish song. I swear, man, why does this thing exist on wild Pokemon? <sighs> Luminion and Krabby from Rippling Spots on Verbank City. Quillfish, Relicanth, evolving Goldeen into Sea King at level 33. And Gorobis, or Huntail and Black 2, from Rippling Spots. And Finneon and Clampearl from Normal Fishing on Route 4. Barboach from Normal Fishing and Whiskash from Rippling on Route 8. Tratini from Normal Fishing outside of Dragon Spiral Tower, and evolving into Dragonair in one level and into Dragonite at level 55, Love Disk and Shelter from Rippling Fishing in Undella Town, evolving straight into Cloister after a Waterstone, Chinchu from Normal Fishing in Undella Bay, evolving Glammeow into Perugly at level 34, as well as Chinchu into Lantern after a single level, Sharpedo from Rippling and Carvana from Normal Fishing under the Village Bridge, Phoebus and Milotic from Rippling on Route 1, and finally, Horsey, Seedra, and Kingdra from Rippling Fishing on Route 17. With fishing over, we've only got a few things left, those being in-game trades, fossils, swarms, and the remaining breeding and final level-ups. 
This is actually easily done, as if you set your DS's clock to 11.59 of the current day, enter the game and let it roll over to midnight, you'll be able to soft reset for fossils, swarms, and get the new Yancey trades. Meaning this part's actually a piece of cake, but I'll keep it separately for your sake. For swarms, I got Farfetch'd on Route 1, Ilmise on Route 3, or Volbeat in Black 2, Natu on Route 5, immediately evolving into Zatu, Minin on Route 6, or Plusle in Black 2, Furret on Route 7, Quagsire on Route 8, Swallot on Route 9, Masquerade on Route 11, Doduo on Route 12, evolving it into Dodrio and grabbing Swallow on Route 13, Firo on Route 15, Pineco on Route 16, evolving into Fortress, Hopip on Route 18, evolving into Skiploom, then into Jumpluff, Mr. Mime on Route 20, or Sudowoodo in Black 2, Ladian on Route 22, or Ariados in Black 2, Slowpoke in the Abundant Shrine, evolving into Slowbro at level 37, Hypno in the Dream Yard, and two Hippowdon in the Desert Resort. The remaining fossils I got were Kabuto, Aerodactyl, Lilip, Anorith, and Kranidos, evolving them into Kabutops, Cradilly, Armaldo, and Rampardos respectively with the exception of Aerodactyl. Moving on to Yancey trades, I am able to get Meowth, evolving into Persian at level 28, Wobbuffet, Ralts, evolving into Curlia and into Gallade with a Dawnstone, Rhyhorn, evolving into Rhydon, Shellos, evolving into Gastrodon, Mawile, Spiritomb, Snorlax, Teddy Ursa, evolving into Ursaring, Spinda, and Togepi, evolving into Togetic with Max Happiness, and into Togekiss with a Shiny Stone. The last in-game trades outside of Yancey are Ambipom for Excadrill and Alakazam for Hippowdon, both of which are in Accumulatown. We'll get to the last one after the breeding as it requires Ditto, leaving just the remaining breeding. Oh, yeah, and Heatran. I don't know how I forgot to grab the Magma Stone while we were on Route 18, then catch it, but I did, and here we are. I've got it now. The final blitz is here with breeding, and with all of the incenses I got from the Driftvale Market, let's bang them out. I didn't intend on making that joke again. I just wrote it down in the script ironically. Please don't frame me. Anyway, I can get Badoo while holding the Rose Incense, Blitzel, Volbeat or Illamise if you're playing Black 2 by breeding the Reciprocal, Sentret, Wooper, Gulpin, Surskit, Talo, Spiro, Mime Jr. while holding the Odd Incense, Ladyba, Drowsy, Hippopotas, Apom, Abra, Evolving into Kadabra, why not with the Lax Incense? Munchlax with the Full Incense? A second Ralts, allowing me to evolve it into Curlia and into Gardevoir. Finally, I can trade over Ditto for Rotom over on Route 15, finishing off the challenge with a total of 428 Pokemon in a time of 118 hours and 26 minutes. You'll have 431 Pokemon in Black 2, as you'll have to finish the Black Tower over in Black City in order to get a Shiny Gibble and evolve it up. Since yeah, if you didn't notice, I didn't have to enter White Forest for a single reason, as you can only get Dratini in White 2, so I just fished for it elsewhere. I've gotta say though, I'm shocked this one was much shorter than HGSS, but wow, it was actually pretty difficult. Doing this on stream was very rewarding though, and I hope you all join me for my future Oak Challenges there as well, as I'll be doing Sword and Shield, which I'm currently in the progress of doing, Pokemon Super Mystery Dungeon, Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, and in fact, Insurgents. I hit sub goals for all four of these, so if you guys would like to see me hit more sub goals, as the next one is for Pokemon Radical Red of all games. So be sure to go to the description and go follow me on Twitch, and we'll have a grand old time. Thank you guys so much for watching the video, and if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe, like the video, comment down below what you want to see in an Oak Challenge in the future and hit the bell so you get notifications for my videos coming out. I'll also be streaming directly after this video goes live, so again, if you have not followed over on Twitch, go over there. It do be fun. Lastly, I made sure to rename the second channel Chaotic Meatball TCG, since I will be doing Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh! videos over there probably a few a week, so there's that. Anyway, with all that shilling out of the way, you guys stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you next time.